determining ionization energy and electronegativity of elements. Yan ang pag-aaralan natin ngayon. So, simulan na natin. What are ions? Ions are practically charged particles. Positive and negative ions form when electrons are transferred between atoms. So, when different atoms form chemical bonds, electrons are transferred. Again, the manner of transferring can either be losing of electrons, gaining of electrons, or sharing of electrons. And this is where positive and negative ions are formed. So, how do elements behave? Metallic elements tend to lose electrons, and nonmetals tend to gain those electrons. So, if a metal and a nonmetal chemically bond, the metals would tend to lose their electrons, and nonmetals would gain those electrons, forming ions. So, here's the word an ion, an ion with a negative charge. Let's see the examples here. So we have nitrogen, oxygen, and chlorine. You see negative 3 here. In oxygen, you see negative 2. And in chlorine, you see negative 1. What do these negative numbers mean? Metals tend to lose electrons. Non-metals tend to gain electrons. Now, we have nitrogen, oxygen, and chlorine. Let's go back to the periodic table. Nitrogen is a non-metal, oxygen is a non-metal also, and chlorine is also a non-metal. Now here it says non-metals tend to gain electrons. Here, these negative numbers mean, let's say for instance in the case of nitrogen, nitrogen gained 3 electrons, oxygen gained 2 electrons, and chlorine gained one electron. That is why they are called an ion. Okay, next word, cation. An ion with a positive charge. So, sodium and calcium. Sodium is a metal. Calcium is a metal. Calcium, sodium. Behavior, when they bond, metals tend to lose electrons. So this positive one here means that sodium lost one electron and calcium lost two electrons. Hence the word cat ion. Okay, let's proceed. So what is electronegativity? Electronegativity refers to the ability of an atom to attract electrons when the atom is in a compound. So when atoms bond chemically with other atoms, they form compounds. And the ability of an atom to get those electrons in a chemical bond is referred to as electronegativity. So what is an electronegativity value? The electronegativity value of atoms increases from left to right across a period on the periodic table. How is that? Here, where you have these elements in the periodic table. Electronegativity increases from left to right. You start with lithium, 1. Beryllium, 1.5. Boron is 2.0. Carbon is 2.5. Nitrogen is 3.0. Oxygen is 3.5. And chlorine gets the highest negativity value of electronegativity value of 4.0. By just knowing this principle or concept, you can easily determine the electronegativity values of elements. Alright, so let's go back. Electronegativity value is high for the nonmetals with fluorine as the highest. This is our evidence. If you look at this periodic table, see? Lithium is 1, fluorine is 4. Sodium is 0 0.9, chlorine is 3, potassium is 0 0.8, bromine is 2.8, rubidium is 0 0.8, iodine is 2.5, and cesium is 0 0.7, and this is a statin. Alright, a statin. Okay, here. Okay. 
high for non-metals. These are all non-metals. Comparing the electronegative value of electronegativity values of non-metals to metals, you see here that they have higher electronegativity values. And last would be the electronegativity value is low for the metals. So these are all metals. We'll be making use of this in the exercise later. You may go back to this slide during the activity. Let's proceed. So, what are nonpolar covalent bonds? A nonpolar covalent bond occurs between nonmetals. Take note of that, nonmetals. Okay? A nonpolar covalent bond is an is equal or almost equal sharing of electrons. It has almost no electronegativity difference from 0 0.0 to 0 0.4. Okay, examples. So we have atoms, electronegativity difference, and the type of bond. Atoms, you have nitrogen and another nitrogen. This is 3.0 and this is 3.0. How do you do that? All you have to do is to go back here. Okay, so this is nitrogen, 3.0, Put it here, and look at the second atom, and look for its electronegativity value, which is nitrogen once again, so it's 3.0. Subtract the numbers, subtract this number from the previous number, you get 3.0 minus 3.0 equals 0, 0.0. Now we'll go here. Electronegativity difference 0 0.0 to 0 0.4 are nonpolar covalent bonds. So all you have to do is to type it here or write it here. The second example chlorine and bromine. So, chlorine, let's look at the electronegativity difference. Let's look at the electronegativity value of chlorine here. So, 3.0. Put it here. Second atom is bromine. Bromine is 2.8. There. Subtract 2.8 from 3.0, you get 0 0.2. And nonpolar covalent bonds. Last would be hydrogen and silicon. So you have 2.1. How's that? Here, 2.1. And you have silicon. It's 1.8. There. Difference 0 0.3 nonpolar covalent bond. It's as simple as that. And the most important thing is you know how to look at the values in the periodic table. So that shows the electronegativity values of the elements. Just like this. Next, polar covalent bonds. What are these? They occur between non metal atoms. It's the same thing with a nonpolar covalent bond. An equal sharing of electrons. Nonpolar, equal or almost equal. Polar covalent bonds, an equal sharing of electrons. What is the electronegativity difference? Moderate. From 0 0.5 to 1.7. Now let's look at the examples. So you have these atoms, oxygen and chlorine, chlorine and carbon, oxygen and sulfur. So oxygen, you have 3.5. Once again, all you have to do is to go back to the electronegativity values of elements here. Oxygen. And you have chlorine. It's 3.0. So, drop 3.0 from 3.5, we get 0 0.5. So, how do we compare the nonpolar and polar covalent bonds using an illustration? So, this is an example. Equal sharing of electrons here. In the molecule of hydrogen, because mo uh, hydrogen is a diatomic molecule, see, each of the participating nonmetal atoms shared one electron. So, equal sharing of electrons. So, one from this hydrogen atom and one from this hydrogen atom forming a diatomic molecule of hydrogen. Okay, the bond is represented by a dash. Now, let's look at the 
an equal sharing of electrons in a polar covalent bond. This one is non-polar covalent bond. Equal sharing. Polar, unequal. So hydrogen has one electron, or one valence electron, and chlorine has 2, 4, 6, 7. This is a non-metal. This is a non-metal. Hydrogen contributes one valence electron. And chlorine has seven valence electrons. So after the chemical bond is formed, you have a stable eight electrons in the compound, thereby making it electrically stable. Following the octet rule, this line represents the chemical bond. These are both covalent bond. The difference is that this is a non-polar covalent bond and this one is a polar covalent bond. Alright? Next, so ionic bonds occur between metals and non-metal ions and it has a large electronegativity difference 1.8 or more. Examples, chlorine and potassium. The electronegativity value of chlorine is 3.0 and the electronegativity value of potassium is 0 0.8. Again, how do we know this? It's as simple as going back to the electronegativity value of the elements in this illustration. Next, nitrogen and sodium. That's 3.0 minus 0.9 is 2.1. So how can we predict the bond types? All you have to do is to... This is actually crucial. These two. See? Shared equally, shared equally. Shared unequally. How do we know it is shared unequally? We got this. 2.8 minus 2.1 is 0 0.7. This is polar covalent. How do we know? You have to do this to go back here. Here. 0, 0 0.5 to 1.7 polar covalent bonds. How do you determine these numbers? All you have to do is to get the electronegativity value of the combining elements. Subtract the value of the second element from the first element. And the answer that you will gain from doing the uh, mathematical operation is the one that will give you an idea if it is polar, non ah, polar covalent or non-polar covalent bond. So all you have to do is to and see the difference between polar and non-polar covalent bond. See? 0 0.0 to 0 0.4. So in non-polar covalent bonds, the maximum number is 0 0.4. Polar covalent bond starts with 0 0.52, a maximum of 1.7 electronegativity difference. Alright, let's proceed. Okay, ionization energy. The energy required to remove an electron from an atom. So take note, energy. Required to remove an electron from an atom. So we know now that when atoms combine, valence electrons are either lost, gained, or shared. Now the idea of losing, sharing, and gaining electrons require energy. And that is what we call ionization energy. Right? The bigger the ionization energy value, the harder to lose an electron. Why? Because the stronger the atom is holding on to its electron. So the bigger the ionization energy value. So the question is, how do we de determine the number of ionization energy value? First, there's a way. First, Let's describe the first and second ionization energy. The first ionization energy is the energy required to remove the first electron from its atom. How does it work? It tends to increase from top to bottom within a group and increase from left to right across a period. I'll show you uh, an illustration that shows this later. Second and third ionization energy. The second ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron from an ion with a positive one charge. And the third ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron from an ion with a positive
positive to two charge. Okay, so let's use this example. Downing group. So you have lithium, you have sodium. Now it says here, sodium has more energy levels. You have one, two, and three. Farther from protons. Protons are found in the nucleus of the atom here. Okay. Lithium. Compared to lithium, sodium has more energy levels. One, two, three. Whereas lithium has only one, two energy levels. So, it says here, since sodium has more energy levels than lithium, it's easier to lose the outer electron. Okay? It's easier to lose the electrons of sodium because it has more energy levels. The energy that is required to remove this electron is less. Of course, we know that sodium is a metallic element and lithium is also a metallic element. But look at this, down a group, down a group meaning it's a column from top to bottom. As you move down a group of family or family, the, the ionization energy decreases, meaning when the ionization energy decreases, it's easier to lose an electron. Okay, another example, across a period, you have lithium and beryllium. So when you say across a period from left to right of the periodic table, both have the same number of energy levels, 1, 2, 1, 2. But beryllium has more protons, and protons are pulling stronger on them outermost electrons. You have the protons in the nucleus of the atom pulling the outermost electrons. As you move across a period, the ionization energy increases. So it's harder, not harder, it's harder to lose an outer electron because of the presence of more protons in the nucleus of the atom. Alright, so to make it easier for you to understand, just look at the periodic trend in the periodic table. So when we talk about ionization energy from left to right so lithium beryllium down to fluorine because so these noble gases already have stable configuration so increase in ionization energy so the question is which among carbon and beryllium has bigger ionization energy to answer that question, all you have to do is to look at the periodic table and recall the periodic trend which says the ionization energy increases from left to right. So if this is located on the farther right side of the periodic table than this element. Therefore, this has a higher or bigger ionization energy. But from top to bottom, this is group 1. From lithium to francium, increase in ionization energy rather. So, between sodium and rubidium, sodium has a higher or bigger ionization energy and rubidium has a smaller ionization energy. Reason, in a group, down a group, ionization energy increases. So, the one on top has the biggest ionization energy here so let's summarize the periodic trends the red one refers to the atomic size the black represents the electronegativity value and the blue line represents or the blue arrow represents the ionization energy so this summarizes what we have talked about today okay that's it we're done so your next thing would be to answer the exercise. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Like, share, and subscribe.